welcome to another exciting edition of Training Unleashed. We're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is reinvention. We're very lucky to have Jonathan Kaiser with us. And this is a man that really understands the importance of reinvention. This is going to be, I think, really awesome. But Jonathan, before we begin, why don't you tell us a little bit about your history? Because you've got kind of a cool background. Sure, sure. Well, I used to be a ruthless, cutthroat, take no prisoners, commercial real estate broker. And I would do whatever it took to be successful. I wasn't raised that way. I was actually a Christian missionary kid. I grew up in Papua New Guinea of all places. Wow. And my parents taught me to love and serve and help and give. Problem was when we came back from overseas, I had the stark realization that we were poor. I didn't <laughs> like being poor. So I got into commercial real estate because I wanted to get rich. And the problem was, as I got in, I realized really quickly, wow, this is a cutthroat environment. So kind of like boiling the frog, Evan, I became ruthless because I thought that's what it took to be successful. But I was miserable and I was misaligned with my core values. But I felt trapped. I didn't know a better way. I just thought this is what it took to be successful. And, again, and that's your thought, book right behind you, right? Move your head that's a little right. bit. Like people, people on YouTube can watch it. Ruthless that's to right. win. You don't have to be ruthless to win, people. <laughs> so anyways, 15 years ago, I, the, the idea of what if you could actually do what my parents taught me to do and actually have financial success um, became exposed to me at a conference. And long story short, I reinvented myself around it. It was a long, hard road. People thought I was crazy. I just started helping everybody that I could, asking for nothing in return. And over years and years of doing that, it helped so many people that people started sending business my way. And I'm like, wow, this is unbelievable. And the more people gave to me, that more gave, that I had to give to them. And fast forward today, we have, I started, decided to start my own firm that was focused just on the philosophy of succeeding by helping others succeed and by creating a culture of extraordinary a love and service within arguably one of the most ruthless industries in the world and proving that you could actually win. They could actually be successful. And so today we're the largest firm of our kind in Arizona, one of the fastest growing in the country. We've been blessed, but everything for us is about our 15 core operating principles that we built the firm on, which is this is what defines our culture. This is what creates who we are. This is how we hire, fire and hold people accountable. And as a result, we've created this extraordinary culture that others go, huh, if you could do that in commercial real estate, maybe we could do this in our own industry. And so we've created the Kaiser Institute to train, empower, and ultimately certify the next generation of selfless leader. Well, I, I love that. I love the story. I love, I love the going back to your roots part of it. Yeah, it so, came full circle. Yes, you did. You came. My you came parents weren't circle. wrong. Your parents weren't wrong. And, and I totally concur with you that you don't need to be ruthless to be successful. In fact, I think ruthless is a very short-term um, short-term attribute. So talk about the process of reinvention. What does reinvention mean? What's it look like? Yeah, so that I love your question, Evan, because that's at the heart of what we teach. It's this isn't a tactic. This isn't something that you can like go through a 12-step program and you're good. This is a way of being. Reinvention requires you actually reinventing yourselves. It's not a manipulation, it's not a tactic. And so the hardest part about reinvention is it starts with you. Like Gandhi says, you gotta be the change you wanna see in the world. So to create a selfless culture, guess what? You as a leader have to become a selfless leader. So when we you use the term transform. I would, I would, very much so. And I think there's this idea of starts within, and then it radiates outwards, right? So self reinvention, like so, as part of the Kaiser Institute, we do three levels of reinvention: self, company culture, and then external collaborators. Just like my good friend John Mackey talks about the stakeholders, your partners, your clients, your vendors, all the people that you touch. And so, how do you make sure that your interactions are consistent from the inside out? And the hardest part most organizations have is leaders want to have words on a wall and they don't want to have to be accountable. They don't want to have to actually live them. The hardest part about our 15 core operating principles at Kaiser 
is that me as a leader, I have to actually live these things. And when I don't, I have to have an organization that's willing and, and empowered to call me out and say, no, that's not, you know, that's not the Kaiser way. We need to, we need you to be accountable to the Kaiser way. So I know you got a free offer, but I know people listening now want to know about your 15 principles. Mm -hmm. uh, is it on your website? It is Kaiser.com. K E Y S C R.com. Not like the hospital spelled differently. K E Y S C R.com. And you can download our 15 cooperating principles. We also have a lot of free resources for people that want to utilize as part of the Kaiser Institute. We have a, what we call a self reinvention roadmap. If anybody wants to reach out, go to kaiserinstitute.com, request a free copy of that and we'll send that to you and that'll give you some additional materials. But so basically that, is the whole, for, that is for the audience. That is your free offer. Yeah, uh, it's free. We will not charge you for it. Uh, Jonathan, I find that as a, that, Changing a person's behavior is one of the most difficult things. I used yes. to believe you couldn't even do it, but now, now I do. Uh, I've seen it. Um, how does someone change their ways of being? How does someone make that transformation and reinvent themselves? It's a great question. I mean, first, the hardest part is you have to actually want to. So this isn't something that you can force someone to do. I know all of us have people that we'd love to you know, change. But yeah, I just want to take the pill. Yeah, exactly. Just, the, just give me the pill. Um, you know, you have to actually want to. And wanting to means being willing to do the difficult work. It's like wanting to get in shape. Well, are you willing to go to the gym? And are you willing to restrict your cal caloric intake? So that's the first part. The second part is, at the end of the day, if you're going to be a selfless leader, it's critical that you lead your organization in a way that demonstrates that. So there has to be this cultural dynamic where you allow yourself to be vulnerable and enable that, that to take place. So like, for example, one of the things we do here at Kaiser is we have a Courage to Disagree Award. And so if me or any of the other leaders are ever out of alignment with our 15 core operating principles, um, people are not only asked, but encouraged and celebrated and rewarded when they do call us out. So it's, it's about, it's about fostering that within your organization as well, but it starts with, you got to want to do it. You got to be willing to do it. Um, and then you actually have to do it and you have to do it both for yourself and within your organization. And you know, I, the, the want to do it, you know, so many people, you know, faint, uh, say, but that real core want is really, really critical. I do love the idea of the courage to disagree because, you know, I think a lot of organizations, there's not the culture which enables people to feel comfortable sharing an alternate point of view. Yes. Um, so how does your product, so I, I get the free gift, I get the roadmap. How does it work? How do, what, what do I do? What are my steps or do I really just need to go to the Institute and what's sort of what's no, no, no. So we have lots of free tools out there. So three levels of reinvention, reinvention from the inside out self company and then stakeholders so it's a process and we have different levels within the institute so the if you if you have no interest in interest in external help that's what the book's for and that's what that additional thing uh is for the the uh the self reinvention roadmap right so that's the do it yourself version if you want additional help at the kaiserinstitute.com site we have lots of free things for you to take part of, and you can sign up for classes. So we have different level of classes. The culmination of it is a certification program. So for those who want to go, you know, do it yourself on one end, uh, extreme engagement on the other, the, it's not for the faint of heart, but we offer a certification program for people that really want to be certified as selfless leaders with the idea that in the future, it'll be like the JD power, but for culture, it'll be like getting an MBA, but in, selfless leadership and selfless cultures. So those there, there's options all across the board. Uh, you don't have to be ruthless to win is the free is the is the book, the free resource that goes along with that is called three levels of reinvention that you can get on uh, kaiserinstitute.com. And then through the kaiserinstitute.com, there's also a bunch of other things you can take advantage of. Could you share with the audience about gratitude and how one can sort of shift their life into a life of gratitude? Yeah, I want, you know, one of the dynamics of our company culture is coachability. And so for us, it's all about self-improvement and people join Kaiser, not, not only because they want to be successful, but because they want to grow as, as individuals. 
So for us, everything is about helping ourselves become that next iteration, right? Jonathan Kaiser 2.0, what do I got to do to become that? And when we're all collaborating, doing that, holding each other accountable and working together, it creates something very, very special. So I'll hire a coach to come in and work with our people and help them identify where they're you know, where are their blind spots? For most people, it's blind spots where they don't read, they don't know what they don't know and they don't know what's getting in their way and they don't realize that they're, they are getting in their own way. And so identifying those areas and, and, I, and, and working on them becomes hugely, hugely valuable. Um, you know, again, like I said earlier, the key for creation of a company culture that's selfless is the leaders have to be selfless. So sometimes, you as a leader have to make very difficult decisions about people that are maybe in a leadership role or maybe a significant producer for the organization, but that are just not aligned. And by allowing those members to continue, you're undermining what you claim to be creating. So it's, it's not words on a wall. This is real stuff. And for, for those who really want it, it's amazing on the other side, but it is a process and it's not always easy getting there, which is why we have so many materials to help organizations go through that. In the pre-talk, you, you shared and talked about a habit to develop, a, you know, a thing everyone can do every day. That's, would you? That's yeah, the, the, the gratitude element for me is so huge in the sense that I realized early on in my reinvention process that everything that was coming at me, even the stuff that I didn't appreciate was being given to me as a gift. And so I created this challenge for the company. I called it the 30 day positivity challenge, which was for 30 days, we're not going to say anything negative about anything in our world, period. And what you really, what you really find in doing that is how much negative you're saying, because all you're doing is catching yourself going, Oh my gosh, I just said another negative thing. Oh my gosh, I just said another negative thing. After that challenge that completely transformed my life. Cause I had no idea how much negative I was spewing. And then I decided, huh, there's another level of that. And this goes back to your gratitude question. I realized that just being positive wasn't the ultimate but that embracing everything that occurs as a gift is where the magic is at. So then I did a 30 day, everything is a gift challenge. And that was the one that really changed my life where instead of just being positive about something, I was looking for what is the gift. And during this time period, I had some very, very trying things that occurred to me both on the personal side and on the professional side. And it was cool to be able to be viewing them through this additional lens and when you start looking at the world as everything is a gift, you start to realize that everything really is a gift. It's not just a gimmick and everything's being given to you exactly when you need it. So gratitude is everything for me. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's, I think so many people are just waiting. You know, I, people, you know, when I get a better job, I'll be happy. When I get married, I'll be happy. When I have kids, I'll be happy. When I have enough money, I don't have to worry about money. I'll be, you know, you gotta be happy today. Yes. Everything right is a gift. Everything oh. is a gift. So I'm going to ask the question that our listeners are dying to ask, but afraid to. So, okay, I get positivity. I get gratitude. I get that, you know, you, you want to have a team that's open and good culture and all that. But what do you do if you have that team? You got good culture. They're willing to openly share all of that. Great. Everything is great. But the results of the company are not successful. Mm. What do you do then? Well, one of the things that I think is lost in the culture discussion is the fact that we're in competitive business and you have to be strategic. And so one of the things that we teach as part of this reinvention process is, you know, there's this really interesting book by Adam Grant called Give and Take, where he talks about how givers are both the least successful people on the planet and the most successful people on the planet. And he solves for why, like, why is there such a dichotomy? Why is there such a spread? And, the intentional people are the ones that are the most successful and the unintentional bleeding hearts are the ones that are least. So the short version is if you as a company are just focusing on culture and you're not focusing about on um, strategy and collaboration and making sure that you're winning and, 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 and you have the materials to do so and the people to do so and the competitive advantage, 
you're kind of missing the point because you have to be to 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 have a great culture you have to have an organization that is actually able to pay their bills stay in business etc so i think sometimes people get this idea that culture is the only thing no culture is critical it's a competitive advantage but you're still in a competitive world and you have to compete and you have to make sure that you're thinking about the strategic element of it not just about how you all hold hands and sing kumbaya so you have to be uh, have the right culture and, and have a little bit of ruthlessness. I don't even think ruthless. I just think it's 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 you have to be strategic. You have to be thoughtful. You have to. So for me, it's like here I am, this poster child of helping other people. Guess what I do all the time is say no. So I say no to the good to say yes to the great. So. For me, as a, as a business leader, I only have so much time. I have lots of people, lots of clients, right? We have to be very thoughtful and intentional about where we're putting our, our service. And so for me, what I'm trying to teach the world is I'm not saying go, you know, sell your house and, you know, go stand on the street corner and ask everybody, how can I help you? Although probably get on, probably actually work, probably get on TV and be successful. But um, what I'm saying is in every interaction you have with another individual, Instead of focusing on what you can get out of them, focus on what you can give to them. And if that becomes your focus across all your interactions over time, yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be unstoppable. And if you create an organization that's like that, your organization will be unstoppable. And that's what we've done at, at Kaiser, right? We're we're a very successful commercial real estate brokerage firm in arguably one of the most cutthroat industries in the world. And we're loving and serving people and we're growing by leaps and bounds. And it's because of our culture, but it's also because we're strategically helping people. You know, it's, it, it's interesting to me that you have the Kaiser Institute where you focus on people reinventing themselves and culture mm-hmm. and a real estate, commercial real estate business. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not a normal combination. No. And, and, and how the whole Institute came out of was, As people started walking through our firm, Evan, they kept saying the same thing or some iteration of it. They kept saying, wow, this is unbelievable. We can actually feel your culture. Your people are amazing, blah, 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 blah. How do we do this? So for me, it's, it's, it's an extension of I'm not a talking head. I'm not a theorist. I'm in the trenches every single day in very competitive environments. And, and the reason why people are so interested in our training is because we teach from experience. We teach from being in the game, not evaluating the game. And so my vision, my mission, my, I imagine a world where people selflessly help each other, regardless of personal gain, understanding that it's in their own personal best interest to do so. That's what excites me. That's what, that's what gets me up in the morning. You talk about impact. I want to change the world. Like, why do we all withhold the good we could do for others, right? We all know how to love and serve. We help our families and our friends and our groups. Then we get into business. We got to go put on our tough suit and go to war. And I'm saying the same skill sets, the very same ones that work in your family lives that we all know how to do, if you apply that in business, you can have success. And what if everybody did that? What if, as a possibility, people, instead of scratching, clawing, and fighting their way to the top, what if they actually tried to out-help the other person? And what if everybody did that? Imagine what we could do. I believe that the giver, over time, becomes the most successful. It's not instant gratification. It's the long game. Right? But if you're really playing the long game and you want long-term sustainable success, I don't think there's any better way on the planet than by loving and serving people. And if I can do it in commercial real estate brokerage, you can do it anywhere. And so that's why they're combined because yeah. like for us proving that it's possible and then teaching you how to do it as well. Uh, Jonathan, I know you talk a lot about reinvention, but you also do a lot of work around culture. Can you tell uh, our audience what you're, what you do around culture and, how you can support people there. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, it's one thing to reinvent yourself as a leader, 
It's another thing to know how to create a company culture around it. So one of the things we do through the Kaiser Institute is help leaders train other leaders and empower other leaders to be selfless and to how you create a culture that's sticky within your organization. I firmly believe, Evan, that unless you have a selfless culture going forward within your organizations, you, you are not going to be able to remain competitive. I think those top-down, ruthless, cutthroat leaders of today, they're already dinosaurs. They just don't quite realize it yet. And so we're here to help. We're here to serve. We're here to help leaders become the leaders. And guess what? At the end of the day, you have a lot more fun that way anyways. I mean, I know that's kind of squishy for a lot of people, but it's like, why not enjoy the ride? It's so much more enjoyable to be focusing on helping people versus you know, taking people out on the knees. It's, it's not an enjoyable experience to do it the other way. So to me, it's just logical. So where the world's going, the, the, the next generation is not gonna accept this, this, this you know, cutthroat, I'm the boss, shut up and go back to your cube. It just doesn't fly in today's world. And so- you know, It's funny that you say that because I was just thinking about that, that you know, a lot of the ruthlessness and cutthroatness is culture. It's based on, you know, you know, the TV I used to watch as a kid, and, you know, what you're, you know, what you're told, what good business people are. And there's no question there's a transformation taking place. And that, that maximizing your people and talent isn't maximizing the hours they work. It's maximizing their knowledge. How well do they work? How efficiently do they work? How happy are they? Retaining people today has never been harder. No, nope. never been harder. And you're not going to retain people unless you create a culture that people want to live in and want to work in. Uh, and if you think it, about, you know, all the studies are very clear. The people are miserable in corporate environments today. Yeah. Right. And so how, if someone is miserable, are they really putting their best effort for, forward for your organization? And if your success as an organization requires your people getting the best out of them, it's just logical. If they're happy, if they love what they're up to, if they feel like they're part of a mission, they're going to want to try hard and give it their all and give it their best. If they're spending all their time afraid, you know, hoarding, uh, trying to just not be fired, very little productive energy being used on the things that really matter for the organization's survival. Yeah. So we could talk forever, no doubt. Yep. You've shared what your offer is with the audience. You want to give the, the audience the URL one more time. Sure. So you can go to Kaiser Institute, K-E-Y-S-E-R, institute.com. We also have additional free resources on ruthlessbook.com. You can buy the book on Amazon or through that, that, that link, ruthlessbook.com. And then for those of you who are interested in learning more about Kaiser as an organization, uh, that's kaiser.com, K-E-Y-S-E-R.com. Excellent. So we always end with, if you had one tip to share, what would that one tip be? The one tip I would give is focus on how much you can help the next person you bump into, talk to, have a meeting with. If you do that, then do it again. And if you could do it twice, you could do it a third time. And the more you do that, the more you're going to realize how much value you're able to unlock and how much relational uh, momentum you're going to develop in a relatively quick period of time. Well, that was a very inspirational and on point tip. Thank you very much. I want to thank you as a guest. I want to thank our listeners for taking the time to listen. Uh, everyone have a fantastic day. Thank you for inviting me to be on your show.